Welcome back to the hard west. Today we're going to go to the finish line. It's either the second last or the last uh, episode of this great game. We are going into the uh, tent uh, to find the wizard. Red and blue lights illuminated the host of wax figures. Some of them looked oddly similar to you. One of the wax doppelgangers had two guns and pointed uh, one at its own head, the other pointed at you. The guns clicked as it uh, dawned you what was happening. Persons pulled his own guns and sh uh, shot off the automate, uh, automation's hand. Risking further injuries, you grabbed, uh, uh, you grabbed the automation's other gun and proceeded backstage. Yeah. We got an 18 shooter. There we go. For traveling circles, the backstage was strangely luxurious, furnished with mirrors, lavish rugs, and kinda. Uh, before you uh, stood a half or a dozen wizards, each moving in the same way, your eyes were playing tricks on you. You were unable to distinguish the real wizard from the illusions. The gun sprang into the wizard's hand and he shot at you, sending incendiary sparks across the room you managed to return fire wounding him in the leg you determined to know where the grim boatman was the withered smiled he has uh, no quarrel with you until he told you to he was like you he said a puppet of the greater mastermind he had traded his soul for his magical abilities you wanted uh, to know where, what he meant he was told to yeah. Weeks ago, a stranger had given him uh, his talents, had returned uh, to tell the wizard uh, you were coming. The stranger had offered uh, new promises. He would bring the wizard's international renown if he tested your metal. The wizard was uh, to devise a series of challenges and obstacles for you to surmount. He didn't realize he never supposed to succeed. Uh, this brought you to his final words as he was uh, straining to speak. It was also very uh, simply said with a grim chuckle. You would find the grim boatman down the road by the riverbank. Uh, then, having spilled his final secret, the grand wizard uh, Al Greto died. Out of the corner of your eyes, you could see uh, your shootout had caused a fire, which was now spreading across the compound. There was one more unexplored area. We decided to go there. Failing, um, oh gosh, we're taking a couple of wounds here. Failing the debris of intense heat caused to several and your companions' injuries, but you made it uh, to the wizard's trophy, uh, trophy room as your companions collected the wells you picked up in uh, inconspicuous trinket lying on the glass cabinet. Well, we got ourselves a couple of wounds. Nice little cracked skull here. Shredded hand, it's always a good thing. Uh, Randy was fucked up before, but he now got a face mutilation on top of it, which just makes him even more wanting to go to the Bravo. And last but not least, our newest uh, friend, uh, Henry Person, he has a mangled foot. Yeah, well, shit happens, buddy. Um, what did we get in return? Oh, we got plus four hit points and minus 15 luck. Well, I think uh, you just solved your hit point problem. Good job, buddy. And we got plus two damage on the cursed uh, on the cursed ammunition in return to trading it for 25 luck. Hmm. I don't know, our sniper needs a lot of luck, so I'm actually not down for that. We need some healing supplies. Lady Shooter must go, the Dreamcatcher must go, Petri Flying Bolt must go. And in return, I'd like a Mandrake Root, Healing Elixir. Well, 
One more healing herbs. And one more. Actually, you know what? Two. There we go. Just wanting to make sure that we do have everything loaded up. Healing herbs. Drake powder. I don't know, I mean, the cursed ammunition does two extra damage, but here's the deal. I mean, we already deal 10 points of damage, so it's probably not the right call for him. We also have enough damage on him. Maybe the right call for for Randy. But Randy only has 90 luck, so uh -uh. And Henry, with his low hit points, needs the extra hit points, and he's willing to trade in the luck for it. So I think overall fine. We, by the way, we don't want to use opium. I don't know if you haven't heard it yet, but buddy, we're not dealing with that shit here. All right, as it turned out, the Grim Boatman wasn't a person after all. It was a disguised marina named after a fire that took the life of almost 100 people, including the governor Sean Milton Greenhorn and Dave Bryce, the railroad builder. A uh, lone boat was uh, set waiting. You took it across the river. As you rode across the river, the landscape started to change. What at first has been a grassy shoreland had turned into a nightmarish wasteland. Uh, gradually, current, uh, current got stronger and, to your horror, a massive waterfall appeared in front of you. You tried to resist, but, but the rushing water was too strong. You plunged over the waterfall into the unknown. Well, here we go. You woke up in a strange place that you found oddly familiar. It looked as, you have been, uh, as it had been built by humans. You had arrived in a purgatory. Finally, you were moments away from saving Florence. Did you want to play the rest of the story, uh, story's perspective from Warren's perspective or the Undertaker's? Uh, if you choose Warren, you will play with your current pause. If you choose the Undertaker, you will play a pause made up uh, of him and various surviving characters from the previous scenarios. Damn, I would play Warren. I like the Undertaker more, but I'm afraid that we're getting shit equipment, and I don't want that to happen. Did we just get all of the cards, really? Alright. Daddy's home. Wait a second. That is awesome. I love it. Alright. Let's go with the sniper for now. I think we do have an aim problem, so four of a kind is actually not a bad idea. Four of a kind means 15 aim. And I think he also has a relatively low hit points. Yes, so we're giving him extra hit points. Four of a kind is plus two, da five of a kind is plus two damage. <laughs> Hmm. I don't know, we don't need damage. I like 95 aim. And this guy just needs hit points. Up to 5 hit points. I guess that's fine. Now, with the rest... I mean, one way of dealing with it, I like the whole regeneration uh, see, uh, scheme here. Since nearby enemies, Revenger, extra hit points, Royal Flush, three extra maximum hit points, and he is, I think he's fine. Hit point wise, we're good with the others. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, if that's the case, let's rather go for four of a kind because <coughs> our main problem is aim. It, it really is. So. What's the bonus, by the way, for just out of curiosity for full house? That was four movement, 30 luck. Not good enough for him. Yeah, the 15 aim is really helpful. Specifically since all of these guys here provide aim. Okay, so we're going to have one of them to use uh, to use the high uh, the high uh, luck skills. So that's plus fifteen aim. Instead of two extra damage, I think the aim is really better than the extra damage because we need to hit. That's our number one priority. Uh, which means we are going to go for some extra hit points, but it's mainly four of a kind. Um, So next up, let's think about it. Again, we have 65 aim. Might want to increase that to 80. It's just a question, what do we want to use? Shriek is good. Chain kill is also not bad. Specifically to refill health. I also like the whole luck thing, very, very powerful, Crippler, I mean, he would just take a lot of uh, extra luck. Yeah, I think we're going to go with that. So we're taking three luck pony. Then I would like to take a hit point defense and another luck bonus, plus four of a kind, which is another plus 15 aim. And since he's at seven hit points, we might as well take a healing ability for him. Unfortunately, that doesn't seem to stack, right? Apparently not. Mm. Just out of curiosity, but this here would increase his health, right? Yeah. I'm just wondering why it wouldn't increase his health. Apparently these cards here don't increase Warren's health. That might be a bit of an oversight in programming. There seems to be a bug. He, he doesn't increase in health. Anyways, so as I was saying, let's increase the luck. A lot of passive bonuses here, Crippler, Jinx, and Prayer is an active bonus, that's fine. And we get a bit of defense plus extra hit points, that's fine. That's all around a strong character. We just need one additional other card. And I'm thinking about whether or not, you know what, we're taking the invisibility card. That was really good. I like the invisibility card. Or even better, no, you know what, we're taking the regeneration card. Plus one hit point regeneration is really awesome. I like it. So we got blood transfer on him. 
it just just means we need three additional cards for uh, for a full house you know what by thinking about it regeneration is cool but I think we're going to go with the dodge because I like dodge actually a little bit more it just gives you a lot of options specifically if you have 140 um, 140 uh, luck okay which means which means we're going for the um, we're going for the bonus here um let me think that through that's a lot of defense uh, courage shadow kill i like the passive abilities because he doesn't have a lot of um a, a lot of um, luck so plus two movement that's not bad i mean his movement is he really having Yeah, there we go. 18 movement. That's what I thought. Because he was probably the slowest of all. Almost. Henry is just a little bit slower. Good. We got just one Joker left over. Uh, movement side and no ability. But still an option to trade for anything that is not a good ability. Uh, maybe we're trading it for uh, the smell blood. No blood is not a good ability. So yeah, that works out. Or alternatively, nah, let's go for smell blood. I was just thinking if we should put it up here, but that's okay. So we got ourselves four of a kind for 15 aim, 15 aim, 15 aim. And uh, for him, since his aim is okay-ish, uh, we're going with 4 movement and 30 luck. Just so he's not completely useless. I think everyone is pretty well equipped. Just from the card perspective. The weapons are, yeah, so and so. By the way, not sure if we should have healed our wounds because we are probably not going to receive another boon here. Not sure that we're de uh, going for multiple fights. Like the uh, the wounds that we're that we've just received were probably not uh, become boons. It is what it is. The fate of the world would be resolved here. It was the final trial, the end of the line. Ooh. Let's go, baby. And so you arrived in purgatory where your own father the undertaker would try to put an end to your fool's errand oh we're fighting against my father no way Alright, Warren moves up. See on the other side over here. Sniper moves just a little bit further up.
17 hit points, really? Yeah, okay. Who are we fighting? These guys have tremendous hit points. Alright, war moves in. So this here is C person. Oh, that's one of uh, the survivors um, on of uh, what was his name? The Mad Doctor. B person and the Undertaker, my father. There we go. C person was injured. this whole ricochet thing working they build up a wall in front of it again really all right no high ground for the sniper i don't want to put him into half cover specifically not if some mad half demon is fighting against him percent chance good enough obviously not so this guy has 17 hit points right I think a good old blood transfusion will bring him down. He all of a sudden is down to 8 hit points. That's 9 damage right there. I like it. Here we go. Karnan Cavera, three shots, three misses, apparently this guy has way too much luck left over. Somewhat missing a lot. They regenerate 30 luck per turn. That's interesting. Let's try another ricochet. Let's try another ricochet, shall we? get into half cover 
matter of fact with zero luck left over I feel that full cover is the only way to go here all right Warren Warren reloads and waits basically uh, for the shot he's depleting um, the luck of uh, this guy here and let's make sure that we can kill one of them at least we're using golden bullet of you those in purgatory cannot move on you exist between life and death and that has disrupted the natural order Randy moves over into full cover Henry here moves also into full cover I just like to have a bit, a bit of a better position. There we go. That was the luck that I needed. Who's the guy with the 30 hit points? All right, Warren starts to dodge. Again, who's the guy with the 14 hit points? Undertaker person, Oswald Harrington. Oh yeah, Harrington. Harrington was the companion of the Undertaker. Interesting. Um, So moving up, we are in cover. That's good enough because we can dodge. Let's reload. Oswald Harrington takes a shot to the face. There you go, 10 damage. Oswald, my friend, it's not looking good for you. going to shoot and that's a very solid hit I think Oswald it's time to say goodbye you must know by now that all your suffering has been orchestrated from that fateful night on the Oregon Trail when your mother was murdered to the curse that befell your father, to your death at the hands of the masked man, to your undead existence, and all the misery and bloodshed that came with it. Still dodging. You have been a puppet all along. So that was round number one. We're still dodging. Time to eat some mandrake root. Slowly but surely we're going to get that back. Once we have 50 luck, we're going to drain the Undertaker. For now, we're going to focus on his companion.
So moving into here, full cover. Yeah, we're continuing to drain luck. full cover so we're taking less damage when we're actually being hit now mandrake powder let's see if we can ricochet into their back That's, by the way, yet another super design. Like, they start over here, you have all of these ricochet abilities to shoot from there. But what is... what is that good for? Instead, you should be able to ricochet off of these fiery... canisters. Anyways, we're moving towards the ladder because this here is currently a very stuck situation. Might as well try to unstuck it. consumes and begins to dodge because that's just what he what he likes to do apparently they have a draining aura so that means Warren is moving very fast away from it because we don't want to lose um, a lot of um, a lot of luck We're going to flank these guys. We'll continue to drain his luck. Sniper is moving up. Maybe next turn we can take a great shot. These guys decide to stay in cover, although they are being heavily outgunned here. That's interesting. We don't have the necessary luck to pull off uh, the, uh, the blood transfusion. That sucks.
Moving into full cover because I want to minimize the damage that we're taking once we're being hit. Warren also moves into full cover and takes a shot. It's mainly to get him down. Warren still has one round of dodge. Next turn he's going to uh, be vulnerable. So what we're going to do is we're going to go out of line of sight. We'll come back next turn with dodge. In the meantime, I think we can kill the, uh, at least one of them. This time, let's take a 100% shot. There we go. Down to 10 hit points. And we're taking the golden bullet. Oh, that's not going to finish him. Well, let's change that. Oh wait, I had the wrong weapon. But that's okay. If you destroy Purgatory, you will not bring Florence back. She and every other soul you release will wander lost, untethered from the world of the living, restlessly roaming and never finding peace. Unless you let her go, all you will create is more chaos. Alright, the Undertaker has finally taken up his uh, last stand. We're unfortunately short on luck, elsewise I would love to drain him. Couple of shots. I'm going to go in with yet one more dodge into cover. Damn! Missed that old uh, man. So that's a 100% shot. That's another 100% shot. I think he's dead. Although our sniper is completely in the open. You have to make a choice. Commit suicide to undo the devil's plan. Destroy the purgatory. I think... We're going to do the right choice here. And we're going to commit suicide. But how? Oh, there we go. He failed. With his puppet dead, Purgatory is back in business. The cycle of life will begin again. Florence is free, purged by fire, and like the other lost souls, will now ascend to heaven. 
life seeps from you as your soul leaves your body. You are judged. There can be but one verdict. You are going to hell. We fucked it up. At the end, we ended up in hell. But there's a certain amount of replayability because you could still try to finish it as uh, The Undertaker and apparently uh, everyone has like two uh, final scenarios. Gosh, that was a great game. I think I'm going to do a bit of a review, maybe, of uh, what I thought about uh, the game. But in the meantime, just to give you the quick summary, I would say the game gets kind of 8 out of 10 stars, so it is well done. For a Kickstarter project I really enjoyed playing it. The game pulls off incredibly well the whole atmosphere, the graphic is good to very good. Um, it is definitely um, adequate for the, for, the whole, uh, for the whole scenery. The soundtrack is amazing. I like the narrator very much like Darkest Dungeon. They copied that a little bit but there is nothing wrong with having someone talking like the death in your game. So these are all really really positive points. Um, the points that I think um, are a bit up for contention are is the whole pseudo RNG system. I like the idea with luck. That was really well done. Um, However, the execution of luck failed a little bit because once I got used to the game and understood the mechanism, uh, like seeing when an enemy was out of luck and understanding when to shoot and when to use certain abilities, it just made the, um, the game way more predictable. And that, I think, takes a lot away from, from the depths of, uh, the, uh, of the actual combat. Speaking about the things that are also probably con uh, uh, up for contention, I admired the idea of the cards uh, instead of having like traits and perks. And I think they were really, really well done once you could pull it off. Unfortunately, similar to the whole boons, mm, you ended up with uh, having too less time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. So you waited a quite a long time uh, to, to get uh, like uh, a wound, then you needed to run two fights with it before it became a wound. And just when, you're, uh, just when your posse was uh, really strong and you had like all of the good weapons, it immediately uh, was the last shootout and there you go. Um, you lost all of it because basically the, the scenario was over. So I guess the cards added a bit of a flavor to it, specifically the randomness of it was uh, fun, but I must say it's still a point of contention. If I could choose uh, probably a skill system over it, I would maybe go for the skill system. I could see that many of these things could be implemented in classes, uh, and the game itself lends itself incredibly well to it, so that I, I could definitely see that there was potential um, it fit, fit the style um, of a casual game, but let's say from a perspective of a more hardcore or ambition gamer, it failed to deliver on that part. And that brings me probably to the criticism of the game, why it wouldn't reach like 10 uh, stars. Um, the way that certain mechanics in the game were implemented, um, I think made it quite um, linear and quite um, stringent and one way-ish to play through. Uh, number one, um, I, I guess the whole uh, scenario about how cover worked uh, dominated, very much dominated the whole, uh, the entire game. Like with, with your, uh, with uh, so much uh, option to, uh, to, to just m mitigate damage by taking f full cover, um, the idea of the fast movement that the game originally 
proclamated was not really lived up, uh, lived up upon. The best strategy in many cases was just to make sure that you cannot be flanked and uh, to hold your position and keep firing and firing and firing, which is the exact opposite of how I would have designed it. And one of the main problems is that besides golden bullet and really bad implementations of ricochet that almost never um, had a line of sight, there was no, not much uh, option to get around cover, no um, grenades, no, no actually uh, denying the cover which uh, brought it to the fact that cover not only increased your defense by 20, so you lose less luck when standing behind cover, but also once your defense is depleted, cover substantially reduces the amount, like standard weapons do four or five damage and full cover mitigates it to one. That is a, that is a almost 80% reduction of damage. Uh, that's like double dipping with uh, armor as if uh, in XCOM the armor would make you way harder to be hit um, and then when you are being hit it also provides like uh, a fixed amount of damage reduction so that the aliens effectively like 10 damage reduction so the aliens uh, always only hit for one and that's how strong I feel uh, cover is in this game which again made it very linear you just need to stand and cover and you could see me playing uh, basically in uh, Iron Man without knowing all, any of the scenarios. I finished all of the scenarios in first try on the highest difficulty. Uh, second point of contention probably was the AI. Uh, the AI was a bit lackluster, op often running into the open on the highest difficulty. That was just not very well programmed, um, I guess. There is room for improvement for it. Uh, I did not feel really challenged. It was more like a story mode game. And for me, it also took a little bit away the replayability of the game. I did, do not feel like needing to um, hunt for achievements. Um, that the, the Fate Trader is well stocked. You have the same weapons that you're buying over and over again. So I guess my take on that would be probably uh, making the game a bit more difficult would uh, make it appealing. Um, last point of criticism, probably the card balancing. I mean, some of the cards were incredibly good, other cards were lackluster bad. I felt dodge, for instance, was super good. Um, health transfer was very, very, very strong. Uh, regeneration was strong. Golden bullet was strong. Um, the jinxing uh, and the um, and uh, the um, the what was it called the crippling shot yeah the crippling shot were uh, were pretty sh uh, strong um, and absolutely worked absolutely fine some other abilities in my perspective overpriced because they were actually more niche abilities chain kill yeah it was a bit like serial but then again you did not have enough targets it's definitely not comparable with a sniper setup where you can like shoot four or five times because squad side was also not implemented and there was way too much cover in the way. Um, sometimes some abilities which look great on paper, cannibalism for instance didn't work at all, um, inferior power where you can turn into a devil did not uh, work for me. Um, the whole ricochet thing did not really work for me. So I guess a bit of bug fixing, but also rebalancing could, uh, could go a long way. I do understand that it's difficult to uh, create uh, 36 equally powerful cards. But then again, there were some cards that were actually missing. A card that trades luck for health, um, i.e. Uh, allowing you to heal others, would uh, make for a great medic class. I think that theme was uh, rather underdeveloped. Uh, card uh, that uh, ties into the the option of uh, of being more ignored via the setup phase also not a uh, not a bad uh, option I mean um, there was one that allows it but maybe um, even gives you gives you more uh, options in the setup phase so I could imagine a couple of more cards that uh, that would uh, be beneficial and some others might be just um, an option to get rid of them the blood smell or some other passive sense uh, mechanisms they weren't really uh, super useful anyways overall I don't want to run too uh, much about the game I had a blast 
The storyline was absolutely phenomenal. Graphics great, uh, sound great, um, uh, narrator great, storyline like I said great. Whole uh, Wild Western feeling, and just from a uh, RPG perspective or from a tactical perspective, it was a very solid game. Took uh, took the whole uh, XCOM cover concept. Had a couple of sheriffs here and there. I liked that and it brought um, up a very very nice uh, lively world um, which I think uh, it was based on Wastelands, the role playing game. Um, it did a job pretty, uh, uh, quite well. I think um, it uh, incorporated a lot of uh, the mechanics of the game and showed kind of the desperation of the Wild West. So that was good. Overall, 8 out of 10 stars, guys. I can recommend it. I got the game for 88 cents and it was definitely worth its value. Um, you might want to look it up at Steam. I think at the moment it's $3. So definitely a grab for 25 to 30 hours of uh, decent gaming. I had a blast. Um, I hope you enjoyed the series as well. Um, please leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about Hard West. Uh, I'd like to understand your opinion as well. Have I judged uh, the game correctly or do you disagree with the statements that I've made? Alright, take care and have a great evening. Bye bye.